Hello, my name is Les Litton. I'm the Technical Sales Director of Antrica. I wanted to show you how to set up our Sony Zoom Block video encoder called the ANT177ZB. So this is the board in question. Um, as you can see, it's the same size effectively as a Sony Zoom Block with the same mounting holes on the back. And the idea of this is that Regardless of which uh, Sony Zoom Block you have, I'm going to use the newer one, the 9500 series. Uh, this device can stream the LVDS video from this Zoom Block via this uh, encoder. So the first thing we need to do is connect the LVDS cable. Now, you'll probably see that this LVDS has a slightly sort of two-tone piece of metallic connection on this side and then on the other side you've got a very smooth uh, silver connector with obviously the, the gold pins showing under there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug this into the Sony Zoom Block and it's generally a simple matter of pushing it into that LVDS connector there if you can see that. So this is the silver side up, so the, the nice solid silver as opposed to the other side which has this more sort of two-tone effect. So that's the LVDS cable connected into the zoom block and now the next thing we're going to do is connect this onto the 1776. So again we're going to find that smooth end and have that face up. So it's just a little bit fiddly, but uh, that's it. So here you can see the LVDS cable is now connected in. So having connected the LVDS cable, the next thing we need to do is to connect the power and the Ethernet cables. And you will find, if you turn the board over, that there are two USB connections there and there, USB-C, and then two small connectors either side. The power cable is obviously the smaller of the two, and the way we connect this is to get the smooth white plastic, as opposed to where you can see the connectors on the other side, and we just plug that into there. The next step is to connect the Ethernet. Again, same process, find the smooth side up, and connect that into there. So now we've got power, 12 volt power, and Ethernet, and we have the LVDS. The next step is to introduce another camera. So here we have a, uh, a USB-C webcam. Okay, so I'm going to just put that off to one side so it doesn't clutter the, uh, the view up for you. And then we're going to plug the USB into one of the USB cables like that. So we've got two cameras now connected and we're going to connect a third camera. So here we have oops, this lead here. So this is my uh, analog composite video PAL or NTSC connector. So it's got BNC connector on one end and a miniature connector on the other. So we're going to connect that onto the board and the location of the connector for this is a little bit fiddly but it's underneath, so you see this large connector here, it's just underneath there and again smooth side up, just plug that in, just make sure that that's mated properly so you can see hopefully that we have zoom block via the LVDS cable, we have the composite video cable, we have a USB-C, and we have power and Ethernet. So, so the first thing I'm going to do now is connect up the power supply. So we're going to connect 12 volts into this little fan, and obviously the fan is there to cool the board. Uh, I'm just going to prop the board up with a little bit of blue tack or white tack just so that the air can flow over both sides because we do not have a 
heat sink connected to this at the moment. The next thing we're going to do is find a 12 volt supply for the board, but I'll leave that for the moment. And we're going to connect this analog camera. So this is a little miniature analog camera. I'm just going to put that off to one side and hopefully you can see me connecting the composite video into that camera. This needs 12 volts, so we're going to yeah, connect. Connect 12 volts into the camera and 12 volts into the board. And finally, one thing that we're missing, which you can see here, is to connect the Ethernet onto the board. So here you can see the board with the composite video. A little bit of a mess, but uh, you can appreciate lots of cables. So we have the Sony Zoom Block. This is the 9500 series. The analog video, the USB-C, the Ethernet, and the 12 volt power. And that's it. That's the complete connection of this uh, product done. And now what we can do is move over to the web interface and I'll show you how to uh, control the board uh, starting with factory defaults and how to upgrade firmware and things like that. Okay, so I'm now sitting at the, uh, at the computer with uh, my desktop screen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up a browser and we're going to browse to the IP address of the board which is 192.168.0.30 by default. Uh, we do have an application which is called MarisGuard and this is MarisGuard which is uh, an application that will allow you to find boards, change firmware and modify the, uh, the device generally. Uh, it will find the device regardless of its IP address now. Unfortunately, Maris Guard at the moment, we're just updating it for a Windows 11 machine. It works perfectly on Windows 10. So uh, stand by for a Windows 11 update. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to factory default this just because I want you to see uh, what the device looks like when we do a full reset. So in the top right hand corner here, there are a couple of icons that are quite useful. So the first is connected. If that's green, we have a Ethernet connection to the uh, web interface. And this little button here is a reboot button, which I'm going to use in a moment. So the first thing I want to do is just check that we've gone back to default. Yeah, so here we have uh, all the main settings. They're all basically set to default. There's nothing really... These, there are some settings in here, but they're basically our factory default. So now what we want to do is I'm going to reboot the device just to make sure that um, having factory reset it, it comes back in a uh, complete factory reset condition. And as you can see, the board has now disconnected and it's rebooting and it will connect again once the reboot is complete. This normally takes under a minute, as you can see, it's already connected again. So factory reset and reboot, and we're back to a complete default setup for the device. Now, I'm gonna start with the info page because this is the page that will tell us what is connected and what is not, but this will only work if we've set the uh, device up properly. So the first thing we have is we have um, three cameras have been detected here in the camera section. You can see that the USB camera has been detected because that doesn't really require much of a setting. You just plug a USB camera in and it will detect it. And it's been set to 640 by 480. The other two appear to be unlocked. So what we have to do is go into the settings now Oh, before I do that, let me just show you what else is on this page. So <clears throat> in the hardware section, you can see that this is an IMX8 processor in 
the software section you can see which firmware version we have and here we have 1088 which is the latest firmware for the 17716ZB and then Ethernet address here you can see the IP address of the board and as I say the camera uh, situation and also the storage for onboard recording and then this little piece of information at the bottom is the temperature so keep an eye on that because if that goes above 50 60 degrees um, you really need to be starting to think about cooling the board down okay let's move to settings now here in the settings we have CSI 0 and CSI 1 and if you remember back on the info page they had nothing connected that's because we haven't actually selected anything yet so the first thing we're going to do is connect the Sony zoom block to CSI 0 and then we're going to connect the analog camera in CSI 1 American spelling of analog but uh, never mind so here we have CSI 0 CSI 1 and the USB now I'm going to save that first before we do anything further so on the USB camera we can sorry this is because things are refreshing so in the USB camera we can select a number of resolutions depending on what the USB camera can support uh, at the moment I've got 64480 at 30 frames um, that could equally be 1920 by 1080 as we do support three full HD streams at the same time now CSI 0 is our Sony zoom block and that's been connected at 1080p 60 and then the uh, analog camera is connected at 720 by 480 so basically NTSC apologies for that I had to refresh the page so when you refresh this page having set up all the CSI and USB um, it's worth giving it a complete refresh because what you'll find is a new um, menu appears which is Sony camera settings and this is where you can actually uh, have wide angle or zoom uh, you've got digital zoom and you've also got the available resolutions that the camera can be set to so equally we could set that to 1280 by 720 and save that and then what you'll see at the, at the um, when you refresh this page is CSI 0 has switched to 1280 by 720 as that's the only option available so I'm going to put that back to 1080p 60 because that's the highest resolution and once the, uh, the page has sorted itself out this CSI 0 will switch back to a, that uh, resolution so these are the three modes that we've selected CSI 0 remember is Sony CSI 1 remember is the analog camera and USB is 640 by 480 so the next thing we want to do is start streaming and to stream we go to the home page and output streaming and we have eight multiplexes now only four are shown because at the top here you have uh, additional muxes that you can set so you could actually choose uh, additional muxes like that if you need them we we only need one or two maybe for this demo so I'm not going to bother with those so the first thing I'm going to do is set up mux one so I'm going to set mux one up to be the Sony camera now I could choose any of the three cameras but I'm going to choose Sony and we're going to stream to this PC now command prompt as I have forgotten what the IP address of this PC is so let me just do an IP config which this local LAN IPv4 address is set to 0 0.205 okay so we're going to stream unicast to this PC so we need to set that to 192.168.0.205 and we're going to set that to 1234 as a port and save that right, I'm going to close that one so that's the Sony the next one I'm going to do 
is I'm going to do the analog camera. So Sony, analog, and then obviously the third one we'll do is USB. So again, we're going to set that to 205. This time we'll put 1235, which is one port higher than the Sony camera, and save that. And then the third MUX I'm going to set to the USB camera, and this again 205, and I'll make that 1236. So it's three different ports, all pointing at the IP address of my PC. Okay, so that's those three MUXs set up. Now these buttons here are little icons, but they're also buttons. So if I press that button, it will start streaming. If I press that button, it will record. If I press this button, it will take a snapshot. And this is for um, display, which is something we don't need at this stage. Now you can automatically force the encoder to stream by checking this box. So if that's checked, when the decoder reboots, it will automatically start streaming. So I'm going to save that and that will uh, basically start streaming on a reboot. But we first have to start the stream manually. And as you can see, when I start it manually, it goes green. I'm not going to do that for the moment because I want to open up our Maris player. Now Maris player is a low latency player that can play RTSP streams or MPEG TS streams. So I'm going to set up this to be the Sony camera. So transport stream, unicast, one, two, three, four, play. And obviously nothing's playing. If I hit the green play button. This is now the Sony <coughs> Zoom camera. Now, let me just put my hand there. You can see that is the Sony Zoom camera. If I open up another uh, Maris player, this time I'm going to open up uh, 1235, which was our analog camera. Again, bit I'll put that over here and again we need to enable the stream for that to work uh, it's upside down but I think you can see the point there and then finally the let's open up a third player and here we can open up a network stream and this time it's one two three four five six so six is our USB camera We'll open that, but again, we need to start our USB, and there's the USB. So there you go. So we have three different cameras streaming from the 1776ZB, and as I say, on a reboot, all of these will effectively start as long as you have selected the little button here, Auto Operation Stream. <coughs> This is very useful in a drone application, obviously, if power is lost temporarily and the unit reboots, when it comes back to life, it will automatically start streaming. Um, we are using MPEG-TS here, but equally we could use RTSP, RTMP, or other forms of uh, streaming, uh, slightly outside of your view. There you are, this is how to set up the 1776. I'll just show you some of the other menu settings while I'm here. Uh, these are the files that are recorded. We haven't got any files because we've not been recording. If we press that button, it would start recording to the onboard eMMC memory. <coughs> Excuse me. Update. This is a here you can update uh, the firmware using the web interface. Uh, you can default to factory settings as we did earlier. And you can format the memory, so format the memory using these different um, settings. In the settings uh, side, we have, as I showed you earlier, the system settings. Now, the one thing I didn't show, uh, which I will go back to the home page in the output streaming, is the advanced menu. So, if you look when you open this page and you basically set up transport and port and IP, there's a little box to the right here. If you click that, 
you find that we've got a hell of a lot more settings like you can change the frame rate so at the moment it's set to full frame rate encoding you can change the bit rate you can change the GOP CBR VBR if you're using an AI chip there is a version of this product with an AI chip on board you would basically enable it and set it up here so we use the halo 8 processor you can scale the video so for example if you wanted to take a 1080p but actually scale it to something smaller um, you can do that and that's virtual video is effectively a way of using the board to send a video stream if you haven't got a camera connected and the extended codec allows you to choose which codec you're going to use. At the moment, we support H.264 and HEVC. The other two are there, but haven't actually been implemented in full. So that's pretty much it. Uh, these are an ex extended settings you can use for each of the muxes. You have one of these menus. And if you They've all got this little box with an arrow, which basically means open up the extended menu or close it. And going back to the settings page, here we've got the Sony camera settings, as I showed you. Um, so if you do that, you can see there's a bit of they appear to have used the same camera for both. Uh, both streams so uh, I'm just showing you this uh, Sony camera setting and as I was zooming uh, I noticed that both of these images started to change and obviously this isn't supposed to be the Sony so let me go back and see what I did wrong so that's MUX3 and as you can see I've used the Sony for MUX3 as well and I should have used the uh, USB camera. So that's basically my error. So let me stop that stream and start it again. And now you've got the USB camera as opposed to the Sony Zoom Block. So there we go. That was the error there. Useful maybe in the context of training. Uh, these other settings here are to do with a UART, so we have two-way serial data. You can change the, uh, the UART settings here. You can change your network settings and time and date. You can choose the ports for RTMP and RTSP. And then there's you can auto-delete the recorded um, footage that you've saved from this device. Now, an interesting feature of this product, which hasn't been fully promoted yet, is that via the second USB device, you can actually record in RAW video format. So this means you can actually record the video as a compressed H.264 stream, but equally you can also record it to a much larger external memory in RAW video. Now, this is extremely useful when people are developing AI software they want to use some actual footage and actual raw video to test their ai chip and obviously this will be raw video and that's exactly what the ai uses so that's another little feature of this product that we haven't promoted fully yet anyway i hope this was useful and uh, gives you an idea of how to set up a ant 1776zb from scratch and we will do more videos on some of the advanced features